Yeah, thank you so much for being here. I'm just really encouraged, because, you know, after this um, exhibition to do more body of work, and I'm just very inspired and encouraged um, at this show. So thank you for being here. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just want to kind of uh, what you mentioned by ancient people, my ancient method. Um, people might be wondering what that is about, but um, there is this kind of upcycling technique from um, old Korea and the woman, because the papers are a common commodity, but it is very uh, precious in a way because it goes through like almost 100 steps to make them. And 100 number is very sacred. So the paper actually reaching, paper making process, reaching that process, you know, the 100 processes, it's, it's, it's a, you know, special material. So papers were covered, like every, everything from like a liner of furniture to the wall and window, like a shoji screen, it's everywhere. But whenever they need to replace them, they need to, you know, they want to carefully remove them, not just rip it apart and find a way to, you know, reuse it. So these women were actually um, kind of wetting it and, you know, uh, layering it and belting it. So that's the technique, ancient technique that I'm borrowing from old Korea to do this method. But I reinvented it to make it look more like, you know, like these projects that I'm using two to three plies to make and, and certain techniques to make it more um, fabric-like and that one is more like, you know, dry leather. But um, I love that a method, as I research more, what's really amazing is that this transformative process that paper go through, if you do like 13 plus plies, you can actually make um, armor. There is a record. Well, yeah, 600 years ago, the civilians there are kind of equipping themselves, making paper armor. And um, the municipal, they were actually kind of handing out like failed exam, like essay, government, like, uh, you know, uh, essays to people so that they can make them again. Like these are, uh, you know, commodity that were valued. So I'm just imagining like these armors with all these failed answers, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you know, but probably really beautiful too. So I love that transformation of this like single sheet something appear as fragile, but through this kind of laborious, time consuming, um, kind of, it's, it's, it's very really cathartic process. I need to whip them and soak it and make them um, and crumple through and all this process um, that I enjoy doing it, you know, while I was at Redline. Um, that process is transferring the materiality of it and becomes something like dry leather. So that was like um, like 13 foot by 3 foot long large pieces actually uh, commissioned pieces at Gucci restaurant but here <coughs> and you know that one is a white but this one I, I, I love this from space by the way and I just thought that it would be really nice with that kind of dry leather hide look but they are super strong like I'm calling it dry leather These are cold water and when as I attempt make that attempt to as if I'm bending over a pond and try to cast water and um, wind uh, the pond with the you know with the lily. So by casting a lily just I wanted to kind of convey that idea. Um, and these two series, and it's part of the series called a very proper table setting. Mm -hmm. And it is the outcome of a cultural, cross-cultural experiments that I've been doing by taking Korean serving vessels to uh, different places and set up a table that I'm, you know, working and as people, you know, volunteers to come in and do, I ask them to set up a meal for one person that they love, you know, from living or from memory. And they have exact idea what meal that they're gonna set up, but they have to all work with the Korean serving vessels. So um, I believe the serving vessel is very interesting. Um, you know, it, it really conveys the culture and gender roles and just the shape of it and specific use for each of them. So it is kind of opportunity for me to talk about that uh, with the volunteers and they, as they lead um, that you know, meal set up I documented I take photo and I actually gather the stories and I create, based on the narrative, I create um, kind of 
community table. So that's kind of the sections that you are seeing is a part of the um, very proper table setting. But this one, last one is um, actually visually similar, but it is just different. It is a separate um, a piece that I made for this show. It's for uh, it's a round table. There are you know there are three invisible uh, you know, diners facing each other, um, but they're all me. <laughs> this is a uh, my favorite dish um, when I was in you know teens and twenties and now. So it is three of me just facing each other, enjoying this meal um, and having dialogue. So this is. Um, You're not going to tell us what the meals are? Well, I know exactly. <laughs> but, you know, I would love to make these meals and maybe invite some of you. There we go. All it, right, deal. Yeah, I'm yeah. <laughs> leaving for Korea, like, you know, two kids in Korea tomorrow. And, oh, that's probably <laughs> what my son's going to have first. That's his favorite now, too. What is it? What is it? It's a, actually Korean, like a Korean Chinese immigrants. They're kind of noodle dish with the bean sauce, bean and mm. meat. Yeah, it's a, it's a noodle dish, and that is the so that is the first thing that I want to have. Still, as soon as I have it, right? So I know exactly what they are. <laughs> That's kind of what's amazing about the dish, and also this participant who did that, they know exactly who, who's you know they you know they could That's my that's my you know meal for my grandmother, you know. And this Mexican woman actually wants to recreate a cool like authentic central Mexican meal. Perfectly using all these Korean serving vessels, and she was explaining, you know, what that is, and which was beautiful. So yeah, I, I love just kind of seeing this imaginary diners around this setup. It makes me happy. Right. <laughs> yeah. Any questions for yeah, anybody? Yeah. For yeah. Do you do your own sheet for you, or do you have your own name? So you know, I kind of brief mentioned that how the paper goes through about hundred process, and it is kind of seen as a sacred material. So you know, you, you, you probably have seen like Japanese shrine, like have like papers, like folded papers around it. So it has that secretness. So my process actually start from that perfectly formed sheet and just wet it. In. So I kind of this, and I go through that nearly destructive process to regenerate into this felt sheet that becomes so much stronger and beautiful to 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 me. <laughs> yeah. Are the white and the brown the same fibers? Yes, it's all from inner bark of mulberry mm -hmm. and um, goes through that laborious process um, and become a sheet and they sometimes color in this yeah, dye them. Mm -hmm. uh, I mainly just use the natural color of the white one. And so these are coffee stains. Okay, okay. well let's take a move around. Thank yeah. you, Sam. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um,